It's time to say goodbye to ULA and its launches that cost hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars on previous X-37B space plane missions. Currently, the Air Force has another supply option with a price that is only one-third or even lower, but with extremely reliable service quality. It is Falcon Heavy, the giant of SpaceX. In early December, for the first time in its life, this rocket will launch the United States Air Force's reusable X-37B spacecraft under a $130 million contract signed in 2018. This milestone promises to change everything. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. This is SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, a towering three-pronged vehicle that is one of the most powerful operational rockets in the world, is preparing to return to the skies for the third time this year. On December 7th, SpaceX Falcon Heavy will take responsibility for transporting the reusable United States Air Force X-37B space plane from Kennedy Space Center. Florida. A mini fleet of two robotic X-37B space planes, which are owned by the United States Space Force, have been flying secret missions since 2010. The X-37B is a mini version of NASA's iconic space shuttle that is 29 feet, 8.8 .8 meters long, with a wingspan of 15 feet, 4.6 meters. Like the Space Shuttle, the X-37B lands on a runway, plane-style, but does everything autonomously, in contrast to the piloted shuttle, which tended to carry a crew of seven astronauts. The news milestone is quite surprising because it's the first time the company has won its Falcon Heavy contract with the Air Force. It isn't known why the X-37B is launching atop a Falcon Heavy for the USS F-52 mission. Five of the space plane's previous missions launched on United Launch Alliance Atlas V rockets, while its fifth mission, USA-277, took off on top of SpaceX's smaller rocket. The Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, consists of three Falcon 9 boosters strapped together. Such a change could suggest that the space plane is carrying heavier payloads or is sporting a new hardware configuration. So far, Space Force has only stated that the mission will expand the United States Space Force's knowledge of the space environment by experimenting with future space domain awareness technologies. However, Space Force's statement adds that the mission will carry a NASA experiment known as SEEDS-2 that will test the effects that space-based radiation has on plant seeds during a long-duration spaceflight. The NASA experiment on board, known as SEEDS-2, will expose plant seeds to the harsh radiation environment of long-duration spaceflight. SpaceX was awarded a $130 million contract in June 2018 to launch USSF-52. The mission was originally scheduled to launch in 2021 and has been delayed by payload and range availability. One more interesting tidbit, as you know, the relationship between the Department of Defense and ULA is very strong, which is shown by the fact that five out seven missions launching X-37B were conducted by ULA's Atlas V rocket. So the United States Air Force's addition of SpaceX to its supplier list shows that the national agency has been focusing more on competition. During a meeting of the United States Senate Armed Services Committee in June 2017, ahead of the fifth mission of the X-37B, Air Force Secretary Heather Wilson testified that the emergence of the commercial space industry has proven a boon for the United States military. The benefit we're seeing now is competition, she said. There are some very exciting things happening in commercial space that bring the opportunity for assured access to space at a very competitive price. It's true. The appearance of SpaceX with its Falcon Heavy rocket has been breaking the monopoly of ULA in the heavy lift capacity rocket segment in military missions. Not only that, when making a comparison with its competitor, Elon Musk's heavy rocket stands out more by some features. With a payload capacity of 63.8 metric tons to low Earth orbit, each SpaceX triple core Falcon Heavy booster can launch twice as much cargo into orbit as ULA's Delta IV Heavy and its new Vulcan Centaur rocket. Its engines generate as much power as 18747 aircraft, showcasing its incredible strength. 
Two side boosters are designed to land back on the ground after launch and will be refurbished for reuse. This significantly reduces launch costs as the rocket doesn't have to be discarded after a single use. Indeed, with a base launch cost of just $90 million, Falcon Heavy can launch that cargo for just a fraction of the price United Launch Alliance charges for the service. Atlas V starts at $109 million, whereas the company's other type of rocket, the Delta IV, Heavy costs upwards of $350 million a launch, limiting its use to government customers. Even ULA's low-cost Vulcan Centaur has a price tag of around $100 or $200 million, and more importantly, it now has not been yet operational. Furthermore, the design of the SpaceX rocket offers more benefits in terms of mission duration and orbital trajectory, improving mission efficiency and precision. In some cases, the two side boosters can flexibly be converted to expendable mode, meaning they will not return due to specific requirements from the customer. And if you think these facts might appeal to the United States Air Force, you're right. To be honest, before announcing the winner of the $130 million contract dollars, the Pentagon noted that it had received two proposals to launch the USS F-52 into orbit, including SpaceX and ULA. Now, aside from SpaceX, the only United States launch provider capable of launching payloads this big is ULA. Therefore, while the Pentagon didn't identify SpaceX's rival by name, this almost certainly means SpaceX beat out ULA to win the contract this time. So what does SpaceX's victory mean? First, becoming a close partner with an important government agency like the Air Force is a crucial step in the evolution of any commercial space company. More than anyone else, SpaceX is the one who understands the game rules the most. Let's look back at the current situation when the emergence of new competitors in the space race like China makes America worry about the risk of being defeated. This has prompted the Washington government to invest more heavily in the field of spaceflight in recent years. According to the report, 67 space companies received a total of $7.2 billion in investments from the government between 2000 and 2018, and about 93% of that investment went into companies dedicated to launching rockets. SpaceX is a prime example of how early government investment contributed to the success of a company. During its first decade of operation, SpaceX operated off of $1 billion and about half of that money came from government contracts from NASA. Musk notably thanked NASA for the agency's support after SpaceX launched its very first Dragon cargo capsule to the International Space Station in 2012. Thanks to that, Elon Musk has had more resources to expand his company's business areas, thus diversifying the income source. If before there were only rockets, now there are additional Starlink satellites and Dragon spacecraft. All revenue from those is used to pay the expensive bills of the Starship program and make a profit to save the company from continuous losses. You should or should not forget that SpaceX lost $968 million in 2021 and $559 million in 2022, and they only made a small profit of $55 million in quarter one of 2023. It's safe to say that Starship's experimental activities made a large hole in the company's budget. So without the early investment from the national agency, Starship's progress would never have reached this stage as well, and the company would never be alive in the long term. Now, by working with another major partner like the Air Force, we can ensure that SpaceX's profitability in the coming years will accelerate, helping the Starship project grow stronger. Second, SpaceX's presence will play an important role in the long-term strategy of the Air Force Service Agency. Like NASA, the Air Force also aims for competition among its vendors. Previously, the agency's main supplier was ULA, but ULA's rocket services were too high, causing economic inefficiency. For that reason, the involvement of a commercial company like SpaceX brings much lower costs, motivating other competitors to find ways to improve their products while reducing prices. 
In addition to the financial aspect, the most important is that the increased efficiency and cost-effectiveness of SpaceX's reusable rockets have the potential to revolutionize the way the military sends payloads into orbit. As technology advances, the military will likely rely more heavily on these rockets for future launches. This could result in a greater number of payloads being deployed into orbit and a greater number of more accurate and efficient missions. By the way, SpaceX has been developing a new sort of rocket that is much more powerful than Falcon Heavy. It is Starship. It has a thrust of over 17 million pounds, three times that of the Falcon Heavy, and a payload of 150 tons, twice that of its predecessor, while the cost per launch is expected to be only $10 million or less. With those great advantages, Starship promises to be a big boom in the field of aerospace in general, as well as become a powerful arm of the United States military in the future. And the second test launch, scheduled for November 17, will be a major leap forward in the vehicle's evolution. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.